I'll just take it. Okay. Thank you. So as parents, a lot of us tell children who are scared of monsters in the dark that they don't need to worry about those monsters. They're, they're just in their heads, never thinking about how scary the idea of a monster in your head just might be. But at one time, my wife and I met one of these monsters. Now, before we had kids, we were avid backpackers, before we had money, too. We'd go all our vacations backpacking, which, if you don't know, is where you put uh, your sleeping bag, tent, food, clothes, whatever, on your back and go into the woods for a while, several days. And at the end of the day, you just find a convenient clearing to, um, to make camp. And we were very good at this. We took ourselves to some very beautiful, isolated places. I never got sick, never got hurt, and we quickly got used to the sounds of the forest at night, which if you're a city person like me, are pretty strange. But after a few times, we would sleep through whatever the wind and the, uh, the animals had to offer. So it was an unusual night, a dark night, uh, moonless. If you're, in a, if you're in the woods on a moonless night in your tent, you can do this and you're not seeing your, you're not going to see your hands. Eyes open, eyes closed, it doesn't matter. And we're fast asleep, sometime in the middle of the night, and suddenly, I'm awake. I don't know why, I know my eyes are open, and something has got a tight grip on my arm. I'm about to investigate when my wife, who apparently was awake too, goes, did you hear that? <laughs> and I hadn't heard anything, and I'm going, no, I, I, what, I, hey, let go of my arm, will you? Shh, shh, just be quiet. And I listen, and it's a few seconds, and I hear a sound, a big pounding, like that. It was loud enough that it scared us both, and strong enough that it literally shook the ground. We felt the earth shake through the thin foam pad that we had. And about four or five seconds later, we heard it again. Boom. We had no idea, but every four or five seconds, boom, and the ground is shaking, and it sounds like it's getting closer to us. And we are in a panic, because, partly because it's scary, but partly because we don't have a clue what this could be. Nothing we've ever seen is big enough to make a sound like that. A bear doesn't stomp like that. An elephant might if it was mad, but we're really thinking dinosaur size. <laughs> Yeah, I, it really, it shook the ground. And at four or five seconds per step, it must have a huge set of legs. Think you know, Statue of Liberty walking through New York. If you ever saw that movie, we're terrified. We don't know what it is. We can't see. And I am frantically trying to come up with an explanation for this noise. And I decide, it's late, that it was a pile driver. If you've ever seen a pile driver at a construction site, it pounds girders into the ground. It makes that sound. It shakes the earth. It's every four or five seconds. I like this. A pile driver will not stomp you or eat you. Okay, I know it's the middle of the woods, but we had once encountered an oil derrick in the woods, and it goes up and down, so other up and down machines could be there. And it's two in the morning, I know, but. Over time, people will do anything. So I'm going for this. I like it. And I'm about to tell my wife in the hopes that she'll let go of my arm. When we hear another sound, there's the and then we hear and that's about 10 feet away. The arm, my wife grips my arm tighter. And she thinks, I think that she believed that if she let me go, I would run away and leave her alone. Because <laughs> I like that you laughed, but I don't know that she was wrong. Um, so I grab her other arm, and we just hang on to each other, and it's still going <clears throat> And then it seems like an hour, but it's really probably a minute, and it stops. And then the <sighs> goes away and it's quiet. And what we really want to hear is the sound of it receding, but we get nothing. Now you listen really hard, nothing. It seemed like the monster had settled down next to our tent, go to sleep. And we were just hanging on to each other, and eventually, in terror, we just, we didn't say a word, but we fell asleep. 
And the next morning we wake up, it's daylight. It's hard to be this scared in daylight. And so I said, let's flip a coin to see who goes out first. <laughs> and my wife said, get out. <laughs> and I get out. I get out. You know, there's nothing. The trees are still standing, no monster, no big footprints. And she comes out, and we go to get our backpack, our two backpacks, which we had hung from a rope in trees, because that's what you do when you're a backpacker, you, to keep the animals away from your food. And right below the backpack was a hole about this big, six to eight inches deep, made by the repeated pounding of two front hooves of a deer. Bam. During the night, it had gotten the scent of the food, leaped up toward the backpacks, and come crashing down over and over again till it got tired and started going. <laughs> and then it gave up trotted away silently, leaving two quivering human beings in its wake. If we had turned on the light, if we had shouted once, it would have run away. We never had to be afraid. The monster was entirely in our minds. Thank you.